are chatting with Laura and Gary Dum today, two successful artists, one a comic book, graphic novelist artist, and Laura, a visual artist who paints with canvas as her medium. And they have decided to take their colorful, fun art and use it to tell some strong messages like climate change, uh, genetic engineering, and extinction. Today, we're going to start with, um, I think every graphic designer dreams about being a successful fine artist. At least I do. Uh, so Laura, can you tell us um, over the years a little bit about the transition from going from a fine artist to a, or a graphic designer to a fine artist? Well, it was kind of like a fine artist. Type graphic. <laughs> yeah. I had it right the first time. <laughs> you had it right. Um, because I've always painted. I mean, that, that's just who I am. So, uh, but, but the graphic art part came when I realized that I could certainly make some money during the day doing graphic arts and then be able to do my painting on my own time. So I worked with a, a two-man studio, um, and he taught me a whole lot uh, about typesetting, about design, about just being on your own. And then I went to work for uh, a Northern Ohio Live magazine, and that was in the production department. So that taught me a whole lot. And, and I got to do a, a couple covers, and I got to, to learn, get a good education about design. So... After that, I decided, well, I kind of would prefer to have a little bit more freedom than have a nine-to-five job. Decided to go on my own, and that gave me the freedom to be able to still be making money to pay the bills, but um, I could paint. If, if I wanted to take off a couple days and paint, I could do that. If I wanted to uh, you know, do my work on the weekend, I could do that. If I wanted to do my work at 10 o'clock at night, I could do my work, you know. But it, it, was, it, it was nice being able to do art all the time. You know, Gary comes from, from working for years doing the graphic novelists, uh, the, with working with Harvey Picar, and you came from kind of doing these rock star pattern paintings, and then you evolved into the cats. I think that was the way that it went, right? Kind of. And then... Um, and then you, you decided to collaborate and do these more politically charged uh, pieces that you collaborated with Gary. Talk a little bit about the collaboration and why you switched to doing, like kind of working separate. I think you, you said that um, working with Harvey kind of did well, that. Well, he's, he, number one, he's a great person to collaborate with. And, and that's why he's always had a lot of, you know, comic book work. And he, he's worked with Harvey for 30 years he, you know, has got other authors and other artists that enjoy working with him. Maybe I was a little jealous, you know. <laughs> but in 2006, when the American Splendor movie came by, um, it, it was a thing as to where uh, Gary needed a lot of his artwork colored that Harvey wanted to use for promotion. Like we were doing, um, Harvey had uh, this series of comics that was in Entertainment Weekly, uh, he was doing a lot of promotion for the movie, like posters and and two page comic place at me and pieces that were maybe sent to overseas. Um, so it, it was a big deal. Gary needed some help, and I was happy to do it. Um, so, but even when we were doing the graphic art stuff, like if I needed help with a drawing, I don't draw. So he draws. I would take it to him. If he needed help with the computer, he would ask me, and I would do that. So. We kind of did, but still we were doing our separate graphics, you know, or, 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 or but, but we always like to think of this as sort of illustrator meets painter, you know, and that makes perfect sense. He's got some, you know, qualities in, in his work that I really need in mine, and I have qualities in my work that he, he, he doesn't want to learn the computer, right, to the extent that I know the computer, you know, and truthfully, I have never been good at drawing. He says I draw with paint, but, you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't have that real fundamental drawing that he does. Well, I, I, I have to agree, you do draw with paint. Well, and you do have an ability with colors that are... That I know is my strength. <laughs> yes. And that's what he would always come to me exactly. for. Exactly. So, so talk about then the, 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 uh, the first collaboration you had with the... Fame, shame, blame, game. Um, well, we were 
every night when we'd watch the news, which is we watch one hour of news a day. I watch one hour of news, and that's like when I'm getting dinner ready, we're sitting there watching TV. <coughs> Pardon me. And, you know, these news stories would come on that, that were just so head-shaking. You'd just sit there, and, and we'd go, that would make a good painting. That would really make a good painting. And so eventually he started coming up with these ideas like the overuse of prescription drugs. You know, well, we could do a painting and make it a game, but make it like the Candyland game, you know. Or we did another one that was like the, the, the shoots and ladders game. And that, you know, was, was like all the morale stuff that has really kind of gone down the tubes lately. <laughs> um, you know, and, and all of a sudden he's coming up with these kind of brilliant ideas of, well, this would be this would be cool, this would be fun, this would be getting a message out there. So we wanted to keep all of those things and, and kind of um, make it so that people wouldn't be offended, but yet people would get the idea in kind of a backdoor way. All right, so then that evolved, the uh, fame, shame, blame game. Thank you. Evolved into this <laughs> environment. That took me like a, about eight months to, <laughs> to learn that one. Into this environmental series. Yeah. So what prompted to switch from kind of the corporate prescription drug kind of to, I mean, there's a lot of connection there, but like to go to the environmental route. Well, I wanted to do a, a series about bugs and how I wanted to do it. And I, I told Gary that I wanted to do half of it as the real bug down the, a split. And then the second one as sort of a monstrous bug that has been affected by the pesticides or has been affected by all the environmental stuff that we were doing. So that was my original idea. So you can now see where he takes me. <laughs> um, so then he would be doing sketches and I'd be like, oh, no, no, you don't understand my, my thought here. I want half the bug and then half, you know, and he would be like, well, well why don't we try this? And then he came up with the um, Bride of Frankenstein one. And I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. So then we both sat there and talked about that one for a while. You know, how she could be spraying, how butterflies could be coming out of her mouth and she could be spraying herself with a can of Raid and like just, you know, have a crop duster in the background and have, um, you know, have her in a yellow polka dotted bikini. Things were getting wacky, but yet it all still made sense. And it's like, that was the first one and it was, very, very popular, um, and and so we just kept going. Now, there have been some that I have said for days, I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it, until finally he comes up with something that it's like, okay, bingo, I get it, and let's do that, you know. Um, so. Was, was the, this is just me asking, was the B second? Yeah. That was second, yeah. okay. I wasn't sure. I always thought that was and first. And the creature was... Okay. No. Okay. Um, so... There was um, like about six months in between the first one and the second one, which was surprising. But anyway. Well, tell me a little bit about how you evolved from like... Like, did you learn things from the internet? And or, like you said, you were watching the news, but did you learn things? Where did you learn things? Environmental you... stuff was a little bit more difficult. I mean, he would do more research online than I really did. Um, I knew that there were certain issues that I wanted to, to deal with. I wanted to deal with water. I wanted to deal with pollution. I wanted to deal with um, uh, the bee, you know, situation. But then he came up with things like the coal and the um, animal extinction and and then climate you know warm or global warming and climate change and all those but um, we're learning a lot we're we're learning a lot with this series now i noticed just from watching you via social media and stuff that food was a big passion of yours for a good solid year so was that something that like kind of got your piqued your interest as far as well the whole <laughs> Okay, we did the first painting um, in the beginning of, well, we did the first painting after Gary got the news that he had throat cancer. So when a family goes through cancer, Gary said I turned into a food Nazi. So <laughs> then I started going, okay, this is even more issues. We had just started, you know, like our environmental thing. But now all of a sudden we're personally hit with What's causing this? 
you know, like, um, well, could it be in our food? Oh yeah, here we have the GMOs, which we did touch in the fame, shame, blame game. So I was a little bit, you know, familiar with that. But, but then you, you start going, no, the environment is really what's causing all this, not all, but a lot of this sickness. And when you go to the hospital and see the waiting room and the cancer rooms, it's like overwhelming. So you go, no, something's wrong, something's amiss. And then when you see, even presently with the Zika virus, you see them just willy-nilly spraying everything outside. It's like, do you guys realize that you're screwing up a delicate balance? <laughs> so, you know, that's why even more, once we're even done with our show in October, we plan on continuing this series because it, it's fun to do, it's, it's worthwhile. So why would you use monsters as your, as your method of, of telling the message? Well, number one, monsters are sort of science experiments gone wrong to begin with. So that seemed like a good start. The second is, is that people, people know all these monsters. They already are familiar with them. They know their story. So it's not that they're looking at a totally new painting they're looking at a painting of Frankenstein, or they're looking at a painting of Bride of Frankenstein, or, or the creature. And so then they, they, they're drawn in, they go to look at the painting, then they start seeing what the message is. They start seeing, oh, well this creature is like in a lake full of plastic bottles and oil spills. And then they start getting the message, then it starts sinking in and the person that they're with or, or the group that they're with, they all start chit-chatting and, and talking. And so we figure, great, it's an educational tool. You know, like this is something where they're going to go, you know, I saw this pic picture of the creature and it was all about, you know, like how we're polluting our waters and it just keeps going. So we figure it's a win-win. Well, and we're going to, in a little bit, go look at the, one of my favorites, the, the fracking painting with, uh, that's got King his, Kong. King Kong. Uh, and yeah. he's lighting his cigar, right, with the water? With the water, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's funny, but Again, it's very serious. Again, out of the serious. mind of Gary Dumb, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's brilliant when it comes to uh, just, just putting all these kooky, wonderful thoughts together and making it so that people aren't threatened. You, you don't want to preach. You know, we don't ever want our paintings to preach. Because that just automatically turns somebody off. Well, I want to I want to talk about that a little bit because that is something that seems to be the way that a lot of environmentalists do. They get preachy, preachy, and angry, and um, and I think the message maybe gets lost because you have these divides of I'm passionate that I don't believe in global warming, and I'm passionate that I do believe in global warming. So I think that these paintings, the thing that that I'm interested from an environmental standpoint and tree hugger uh, in my heart is the fact that it does kind of take that fence down or that that yeah. bridge and makes it very accessible to the message. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I've always kind of felt that way about fine art, too. I mean, that's the same thing. I, I've, wanted, I've, I've always wanted it to kind of just be more for the people, for for the every every man that just would look at it and go, oh, I like that. So the message too with the environment mental stuff is kind of like, oh, that's interesting. Not like, oh yeah, you know, like I I do my uh, you know recycling and they don't do that in my city, so I don't have to. It's like, no, you should anyway. You should care enough about leaving the land better than like how I learned in Girl Scouts, leaving it better than what you found it you know, or just as good. So I, I kind of, with, with wanting to make art more accessible to people, I think that we want to make the environmental issue more accessible to people and not at all threatening. Something that my, my, my sister, who was, is a college-educated woman, you know, I mean, she's very bright. She knew nothing about Monsanto until she saw our painting. And right. so I felt good at least... You know, right? I mean, so it, it's a good feeling. Um, it's fun to do. It's 
it's it's a win win win. <laughs> Yeah, you it's know. changing one one person at a yeah. time, which is the... the and I'll tell you, with these paintings, we have gotten into galleries that I have tried for four or five years to get into and never gotten into. So they are being accepted very well. Okay. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit... Uh, well, I think we're going to talk to Gary about this, the Here There Be Monsters dragons. Yeah, speaking. that's... The, you know, anything that's, that's part of this <laughs> brilliant little thinking part of it because I just paint <laughs> and take direction well sometimes no no I, I do okay oh yeah the hands just went up <laughs> I, I do um, every now and then kind of challenge him <laughs> that's good though right <laughs> yeah well I think that when you collaborate you need a healthy collaborate you know you, you need a healthy um, discussion because that's when you get the best stuff don't you think right oh, I yeah. think so Right, and and this is a very charged type of thing, so yeah. you kind of have to have the collaboration be charged, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he does throw his hands up a lot with me, and I, I throw my hands up, but we come back, we work on it again, and it's um, better than it was to begin with. So what advice would you give our viewers or graphic designers um, that you wish you'd been given when you started out, or what do you wish somebody would have told you? What kind of advice? Well, advice for a graphic artist, I would say, listen to your clients and interpret um, interpret in, in the most beautiful way that you can what they want you to do, because that also is a nice collaboration. And every, everything's better when, when you kind of are exchanging ideas with somebody. So that probably would be to a graphic artist. I think that what I would tell my, or what, what I would want someone to tell my, to tell me, is to just trust myself, do what I want to do, um, and and believe in myself, because that's when the best work comes. You know, if you're trying to please somebody else all the time, uh, or if you're trying to please a gallery, or if you're trying to please, um, except a client when you're working in a graphic arts situation, but when you're doing your own artwork, I think that you should just be concerned with doing the work that you want to do. So we are now speaking with Gary Dumb, the boss man of this operation. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask you, Gary, why here there be monsters, dragons be here? Why that particular title for this environmental series? Well, first of all, I've always liked monsters since the time I was a kid, reading famous monsters of Filmland magazine. But in terms of here, there be monsters. It was a tie-in because it's environmental, with the admonition that cartographers supposedly put on their maps in the Middle Ages of areas of the world that were unexplored. So, I don't think they took it as just decorative, but also indicative of the unknown. And monsters are the sort of things that come out of the unknown, an area of fear, because you don't know what it is. But for me, monsters are better than that. They're they're actually friendly in the sense that if one examines oneself and isn't afraid to do that, one finds monsters there. So the idea of using monsters for our environmental series is, one, they're familiar to everybody from pop culture, or at least most of them are. So you sort of get a hook to get the viewer to, oh, I, I recognize that image. And also, I think monsters, although they can be deadly, they also can be friendly. And that aspect of using them as a foil to hang our fears on is all too common. But I like the idea in all of these paintings, or in almost all of them, to have something, at least 
just a little dash of what appears in most of Shakespeare's plays. Just a little bit of comedy. Just a little bit of comedy relief. Like with the vampires. The gal vampire is wearing the conchocula on her vest. So, it isn't much. But it's just a little something to relieve the heaviness of the message. Because getting the environmental messages across, there's a lot of bad shit happening. And you want to leaven that with just a little bit of levity if you can. So that's what we're trying to do with that. Well, with that said, because you kind of hinted on this a little bit, do you think that you're leaving a little bit for the interpretation of the viewers because there's that unknown? Like, in other words, the painting may be about global warming, but you're not answering it. You're just kind of hinting and letting them kind of come to some conclusions? Or do you think you're solving well, it? I don't think anything's being solved. It's more of, I'm going to gently stick my finger in the viewer's eye, getting them to go, oh, and if it gets them to talk about it, discuss it while they're there, discuss it later, but mostly think about it in a slightly different way, that's a real success. And change behavior, right? If it's possible. I don't know that that's possible. But if it happens, that, that'd be beautiful. This series of paintings, to me, is a logical outgrowth of... And this would defer to that question about what would I have liked someone to have told me. And there is that thing about trusting oneself. But another thing is to have the faith that whatever you've done before builds to the next thing that you're working on now, but builds to the next thing that you're gonna work on next. And something that, I don't know, I'm not saying I would have wanted this earlier in my life, but getting cancer has made me think even more than I did previously use every freaking day to do the work that you want to get done because even the rest of today isn't guaranteed so you want to just put your nose to the grindstone and just do stuff even if it's a sketch that's a throwaway it'll build towards something else that'll be more than that and these these paintings i believe are some of the best work that Laura and I have ever done. It's a kind of a synergy, both for both of us together, greater than the sum of its parts. We're just having a good time doing it, even if there is some arguing big deal. But that aspect of doing comic stuff kind of seeps through in that each of these images is part political cartoon, comic book, environmental issue, painting. It's a potpourri of all those things, hopefully stronger because it's got both of us working on it. Well, I happen to know, and we'll end the, the interview here with this, that Bogart is your number one critic and decides what you're going to do I've, I've seen it. I've seen Bogart picking your drawings. What's Bogart think of these paintings? Tell the audience who Bogart is. Bogart is, is Gary's cat. Who, My assistant. Yeah, he's, he's Gary's assistant and, uh, I believe, the creative director of this operation. Well, he'd like to think so, that's for sure. And I do enjoy his company and his input, which some of the time 